Ladies and gentlemen, under Dr. Batham's narrative, I have decided to talk to you today about the mechanism-based classification of antidepressants, which I hope will be useful to the students of pharmacology studying in medical, pharmacy, Ayurvedic and homeopathic colleges. Essentially, the, the antidepressants work through the following mechanisms. Number one is the inhibition of the reuptake of the released neurotransmitters in case of serotonin, norepinephrine and dopamine receptors. And these include selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors that are being widely used today in clinical practice. Second group comprises of serotonin, norepinephrine, reuptake inhibitors and conventionally we had drugs belonging to this class but they also had number of other pharmacological effects because of which the use has always been associated with number of side effects and adverse effects. But we got a refined form of SNRIs today which I will talk to you. Thirdly we have got norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitors again very interesting class of drug which we will be discussing today. Next group comprises of serotonin receptor antagonists and thirdly serotonin receptor modulators and stimulators and lastly but not least importantly is the group of monoamine oxidase inhibitors that have been in use for the last 70 years. So we now take these groups one by one. If we take up the non-selective and amine reuptake inhibitors, we have got tricyclic antidepressants that have again been used for the last 70 years. That means from the early 1950s, starting from imipramine. So we got imipramine is the first tricyclic antidepressant that entered the market, and this was followed by a number of others. And the list, this list, uh, gives you only the names of the important ones like imipramine, desipramine, clomipramine, trimipramine. These are all similar sounding names and therefore the students should find it easy to remember. Imipramine, then you got desipramine, then you got clomipramine, then you got trimipramine. And if you pick up another name which is very prominent among these class of drugs is amitriptyline. Amitriptyline is followed by nortriptyline, protriptyline, amitriptyline oxide, doxepin and dosulepin. These drugs block the neuronal reuptake of norepinephrine as well as 5-hydroxytryptamine and examples of drugs that do this include imipramine, amitriptyline and doxepin. Individual tricyclic antidepressants produce varying effects on norepinephrine and 5-hydroxytryptamine reuptake. Inhibition of norepinephrine reuptake is relatively more than serotonin reuptake in case of desipramine, nortriptyline, protriptyline and amoxapine. Clomipramine is more selective in blocking 5-ST reuptake and therefore it has certain applications that are similar to the SSRIs because they are more selective this is not selective so but it, it's very close to SSRIs the next group of antidepressants that I'll be discussing after having completed this so let me finish tricyclic antidepressants mechanism action by saying that all these drugs cause inhibition of the reuptake of both norepinephrine as well as serotonin to varying extent depending upon the drug we are talking about. These drugs in addition to also block alpha 1 receptors and thus their use is associated with a fallen blood pressure which is more troublesome in the form of an orthostatic hypertension uh, usually seen in elderly people and particularly those who are exposed to heat and physical stress. These drugs block histaminergic receptors and therefore they cause sedation, 
and sedation may be a desirable effect in situations where it is needed but uh, it may become undesirable in situation when you want the patient to be ambulatory and mobile and functioning normally. These drugs produce atropine-like side effects by blocking muscarinic receptors on which acetylcholine acts and therefore the use is associated with difficulty in vision, particularly difficulty in reading and photophobia. They cause tachycardia and various types of cardiac arrhythmias are likely to occur with the use of these drugs. They cause constipation, they cause difficulty in urination, particularly in people who are elderly and may have an, an enlarged prostate. So those are the problems with the use of tricyclic antidepressants. They also produce CNS effects in the form of disturbance of sleep, agitation, irritability, etc. I have already mentioned that some of these drugs produce more sedation and the examples of drugs that cause more sedation include trimipramine and doxepine and therefore they are used for this purpose particularly in those patients who have difficulty in falling asleep. Some tricyclic antidepressants are useful in painful neuropathies and fibromyalgia like amitriptyline. Doxepine has emerged as an effective antiprorytic agent when used orally as well as topically. And let me not forget to tell you that imipramine has been used ever since it was introduced in the treatment of nocturnal aneurysis or bedwetting in children. Moving over to the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, I would say that these five or six of the drugs are very often used in today's psychiatric practice and these are fluoxetine, sertraline, paroxetine, citalopram, escitalopram and fluoxamine. Again for students I would like to say that many of these names are phonetically similar like you can remember fluoxetine and paroxetine together you can add fluoxamine the name of which starts with F. So you got fluoxetine, you got fluoxamine, you got paroxetine, then you have sertraline and if you have citalopram you got the S in enantiomer of citalopram that is S citalopram. So that's how I would suggest you can remember the names of these drugs. Now what do these drugs do is they selectively inhibit the reuptake of serotonin and thereby build up the levels of serotonin in the synaptic cleft. They also increase the dwell time of serotonin in this synapse. There is an associated increase in the serotonin receptor density and sensitivity which is seen on long term administration and because of these there is an enhanced GPCR activity at the serotonin receptor. Further downstream these drugs lead to an increased expression of uh, BDNF, what we call brain derived neurotrophic factor which is responsible for the neurotrophic activities of these drugs particularly increased neurogenesis in hippocampus and they also enhance because of all these things the ultimate gain which the patient gets is in the form of improved or enhanced or facilitated serotonergic neurotransmission. These drugs also cause presynaptic autoreceptor stimulation and because of this stimulation of the serotonin autoreceptors namely 5-HT1A, 5-HT7 and 5-HT1D there may occur or there does occur a reduced release of serotonin. However, on chronic administration these autoreceptors that are located on the presynaptic neuron are downregulated and they are desensitized and the normal secretion of serotonin is resumed because of this. The drugs next category comprises of the drugs that inhibit the inhibit the reuptake of both 
serotonin as well as norepinephrine and these drugs are venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine and duloxetine. The name of duloxetine itself suggests that it has a dual inhibitor uh, reaction on the reuptake of both serotonin and norepinephrine. So you got venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine and duloxetine. Others are not so important today but they are emerging therapies and they are not so widely used and these are milnacipran, levomilnacipran and nifazodon. So these are the drugs that act through a dual mechanism like your SSRIs. So in, in fact the development of these drugs was prompted by the broad spectrum of activity of tricyclic antidepressants but in contrast to the tricyclic antidepressants these drugs do not produce so many adverse effects because they got more selective action so they spare alpha 1 receptors they spare muscarinic receptors they spare histaminergic receptors and thus they do not produce consequent undesirable effects these drugs particularly the dual acting drugs are used in depression in a big way also in anxiety panic neuropathic pain and fibromyalgia they are used off label in urinary incontinence premenstrual dysphoric disorder post traumatic stress disorder painful states hot flashes binge eating disorders and autism next category of drugs comprises of norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors and these are Reboxetin, Veloxetin, Teniloxazip. I repeat, Reboxetin, Veloxetin, and Teniloxazin. Next category of the drugs comprises of serotonin receptor antagonists, and serotonin receptor antagonists are Nifazodon, Trazodon. Mertazepine, may answer. The mechanism actions are as follows. Trazodon and Nifazodon block S5ST2 and alpha 1 receptors and these effects are somehow similar to those produced by atypical antipsychotics. Furthermore, Mancerin and Mertazepine predominantly block H1 receptors and produce sedation and they also like trazodone and nifazodone block 5-ST2 family of receptors including 5-ST2A, 5-ST2C and 5-ST2, 5-ST3. So these drugs act in a way which is very similar to that of atypical antipsychotics and this probably explains why atypical antipsychotics when added to SSRIs produce a greater antidepressant effect. These drugs produce somnolence as a side effect particularly in case of uh, 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 myanserin and mertazapine. Mertazapine has been reported to cause agrinocytosis and nephazodone in fact has been withdrawn from the market because of the hepatotoxicity which is produced. So I have named it only for the sake of academic interest here. We got a unique drug in the form of vipropion and also methylphenidate which produce a dual reuptake inhibition involving norepinephrine and dopamine. So now in, in place of serotonin along with norepinephrine you got dopamine the uptake of which is inhibited beautifully by a drug called bupropion which is widely used. In addition to blocking the reuptake of bupropion these drugs also possibly cause presynaptic release of norepinephrine and dopamine. 
one of the metabolite of bupropion that is hydroxy bupropion is also active and contributes to the therapeutic benefits of the drug bupropion when used in combination with ssris is has been demonstrated to produce enhanced antidepressant effects through triple reuptake blockade wherein this drug blocks these this combination blocks the reuptake of serotonin norepinephrine and dopamine and this is a very very promising combination of two classes of antidepressants to get a highly augmented antidepressant effect in a wide cross section of patients bupropion is used therefore in a major way in depression it is also used especially for smoking cessation seasonal depressive disorders post traumatic stress disorder and neuropathic pain fibromyalgia and weight loss with this we move on to the morovid oxidase inhibitors and these drugs include phenylgene isocarboxazide tranexaprobin all of these drugs are irreversible non selective mao inhibitors that means they inhibit the enzyme for its lifetime and therefore their effect lasts for a long time at least for 14 days the effect persists and these drugs are non selective in the sense that they inhibit both monoamine oxidase a as well as monoamine oxidase b by virtue of this property these drugs block the metabolic degradation of norepinephrine dopamine and serotonin thereby they build up the levels of these neurotransmitters they are also shown to cause down regulation of presynaptic alpha 2 receptors and their use runs the risk of food and drug interactions that are well known which we will discuss at a later stage in some other video then we got an interesting mao b inhibitor in the form of salicylin and salicylin is a reversible inhibitor of monoamine oxidase b which is located in the serotonergic neurons and therefore it produces a very effective response in cases of depression and because of its effect on the metabolism of dopamine it is used in parkinson's disease so parkinson's disease and mental depression are the two indications of salicylin now we got a whole lot of reversible inhibitors of monoamine oxidase in the abbreviated form that is called rima or rima and these drugs are moclobemide metrandidol perlindol toloxetone and pifimelon which is not only a reversible inhibitor of mao but also a weak norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor so you got four drugs here i am i would like to repeat the names of these so that you try to remember these and these are moclobemide metrandidol metralindol even i am having difficulty in pronouncing the name metralindol perlindol toloxetone and bifimelon with this the list of these drugs is completed and now we have got another another category of drugs that is being used in the treatment of depression and that is antipsychotics particularly the atypical antipsychotics like aripiprazole brexpiprazole lurosidon olanzapine and quetiapine as a matter of fact a fixed dose combination of olanzapine with fluoxetine has been approved for marketing risperidon is also used off label so in the previous section you had seen when i was talking to you about the antagonists of serotonin receptors like meanserine and mirtazapine i mentioned that those drugs also possess 
a profile of effects which is similar to a typical antipsychotics and the all these anti atypical antipsychotics and many more can be used either alone as a matter of fact quetiapin is under approval for this purpose other drugs are mostly used as adjuncts to augment the antidepressant effect of the conventional antidepressants there are off label adjuncts to antidepressants like triiodothyronine tetrahydrothyronine lithium bispirone and pinolol these drugs are employed by experienced psychiatrists to enhance or augment the effect of antidepressants as adjuncts other drugs that are used at times include agomelatin ketamine trandospirone trianeptine minocycline as a matter of fact ketamine has been introduced in the form of its as enantiomer as ketamine in the form of nasal drops for systemic benefits and the brand name of the drug that has been approved is spravato as it is meant for spray into the nasal cavities or nostrils the drug acts very fast that is the major excitement relating to esketamine it acts fast within a day and the effect lasts for about a week and therefore it is administered once in a week so that is the major promise which this drug holds other many other things are used over as over the counter medicines like st john's wort which is botanically called hypericum perforatum you got tryptophan which is a precursor of serotonin you got another precursor of serotonin 5 hydroxy tryptophan you got adimethionine which is a cofactor in monoamine neurotransmitter biosynthesis biosynthesis and bdm chloride has also been used uh, but its exact mechanism action is not known but the drug is being used so lastly i would just repeat that antidepressants are used in a wide range of psychiatric and non psychiatric conditions and therefore maybe uh, these drugs need a revised nomenclature just to complete this video i would like to tell you that these drugs are used in major depressive disorder they are used in dysthymia they are used in bipolar disorder particularly in the depressive phase of the disease and not in the manic phase they are used in generalized anxiety disorder they are used in social anxiety disorder obsessive compulsive disorder is another indication fibromyalgia neuropathic pain migraine eating disorders like bulimia nervosa binge eating agitation childhood aneurysis or bedwetting or nocturnal aneurysis sleep disorders and many more so it's a very important category of drugs which one must remember whether you are specializing are you specialized in psychiatry or you are in internal medicine with this i conclude this presentation and i thank you very much for giving me a patient hearing if you followed me up to the end of this video if you liked please indicate this and also subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon thank you very much indeed once again